Exactly a month ago, nearly to the minute, if you would have looked out your window here, driving by in the Lahaina Bypass, you'd have seen the first signs of smoke. A fire had sparked. Now, a month later, no one but government officials can access the actual Lahaina town. Not property owners, not journalists. You'll get arrested. For miles, there are black fencing running along the side of the highway. They say it's a dust fence to protect from toxic dust. There's still so many questions and so few answers. Welcome to Maui, September 8th, to take a village, how about a charter boat? They're bringing the essentials from the land that has it, just on the other side of the island. A few miles away, it's amazing what a difference a few miles makes. But in between there and here was the fire, the fire that just decimated Lahaina. Many of these people in this line lost everything, but they're still here. They know that many hands makes a big project easier. How did you get out in time? 
Well, we were watching the fire come down from Lahaina Luna and uh, watched it cross the highway and could see smoke crossing Front Street. So I went outside, looked down Front Street, and it was all black. And then as soon as I smelled smoke, I just turned to the other Linda and I said, what do you think? She goes, I think it's time to go. I said, I believe you're right, let's go. So we just threw the cat, the dog, and the cars in the truck. And as we're pulling out our driveway, we see all these people with like carry-on bags, like for like an airplane. And they're all like hot and sweaty. And I just pulled over, I go, get in the back of the truck. And I took them all the way to Kahului, and where they met up with their family. They had family in Kahului. They had, their house had already burned down. How they many, were up behind Luna. How many people? It was four, a family, um, like a, uh, grandfather, granddaughter, I think, uh, and a wife and a husband. Their house is burned down. They watched it and they ran. They ran all the way down La Haina Luna and they started running down Front Street and they just couldn't run any further. I didn't know them. I just looked at them and I said, I got room. Hop in. And then the cars behind me, they were doing the same thing. So it was good to see that people were following what we were doing and picking up people off the side of the road because it came fast. If you hadn't have done that, were they going to end up either in the fire or in the water? I can't say because I would have been gone. I wouldn't have witnessed it, but um, they were tired of, tired of running. I would hope that somebody else would have picked them up. Uh, but the fire was still coming at that point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was already across Front Street at 505. I'm at 340 Front Street. And so... I didn't even know our house had burned down until somebody told me the next day. So I thought, oh, it's gonna be like Hurricane Lane. We'll just come back and have a major cleanup. And nope, no major cleanup for several months. <laughs> wow. When you get out, so many people didn't, they got turned around. How, did, how were you guys able to get out of town on time? It was funny because we're on the south, well, not really funny, but we're on the south end of Front Street. So there was a line of cars when we got to where it turned onto the highway, there was a guy there, it wasn't a police officer, I don't know who he was. He was telling people to keep coming, and there was one police officer on the highway waving us to go. Um, saw all the utility companies had already moved the wires off to the side of the road. I think because we were at the south end of town, we weren't stopped by all that chaos where Safeway and everything was where those wires fell. Um, besides, even if those wires were charged and that police officer told me to stop. I can honestly say I got rubber tires. I would have drove over those wires around that police officer said, take my license plate, call me later. I'm not waiting for anybody. Good for you, because so, unfortunately so many people, they listen, it's, they turned around, they turned into the fire. It is so sad. I've lost several friends. I had to make some not family notifications. That's like one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I'm also a member of the Yacht Club, and we've been calling all our members on the west side doing wellness checks. And there's several of our members that didn't make it. They're elderly, or they were staying behind to try to save their house because they stayed behind at the last storm, and there was no evacuation notice. I had two police officers drive by my house while I'm standing in my driveway looking at the smoke crossing Front Street. And they said nothing. They didn't roll down their windows. They didn't get on their inhalers. They did nothing but drive by. So it gave you a false sense of security until I smelled the smoke. And then that, that false sense of security was gone. It was time to go. One of the biggest controversies of this entire fire is the fact that the advanced warning system that Maui has, 80 of these green siren towers all stayed silent during the Lahaina fire. I woke up at five because my wife was getting ready for work, which inevitably got canceled because of the power out. That we had a bag ready to go just in case because it was wind like we'd never seen before. And with the power out, we, that's kind of started fires before in town. We, But then, um, so yeah, we were just hunkering down. Both I was listening to a book, she was reading a book. So I'm kind of waiting for things to turn back on. Were you preparing for eventually leaving the house or did that even enter your mind at that point? At that point, no. Um, we were just kind of sitting there. And then at about, I don't even remember, 12.30 or one o'clock or so, I got a string of text messages from my work group chat that uh, 
one of the my managers checking in on another crew to see if they're okay because their house was in the right in the path of the fire and i didn't even know there was a fire at that point and that's when i opened up my back door and saw the smoke that i um pretty much right before the of uh, the picture i sent to you was so you see the smoke does it even compute at that point though that this could be a problem yeah, I mean, it looked serious because we'd never seen smoke like that in Lahaina from the brush fires. That definitely looked like houses or buildings burning, not just the gray smoke from the grass. And so that's when we went up to the top of our street in the cane field to watch a smoke. And then by the couple minutes we were there, it got worse. And that's when we decided that uh, we were going to pack up our cars and be ready to go. And so we spent about... As we were walking down the street, we are seeing our neighbors throw like suitcases in their cars. And so in my, the back of my head, I was thinking, what if we don't come back to that? So bring in the water, food, camping gear in case we needed to go camp on a beach or somewhere if there was no place to go. And then about 2.30, 3 o'clock, uh, my wife and I, we left with the cars as full as we could do in about half an hour. Um, you know, we went north away from the fire because there was uh, already traffic going back into line and we weren't going to go towards the smoke. We both grew up in California. We knew not to go towards the, the fire because it can spread crazy. And that's probably could have saved your life, that decision. I think so. I mean, it's, it definitely saved our belongings um, from what we, like I said, think in the back of my head that we might not come back. But making that turn to the north, rather than going into town, where cars were getting stopped, they were being turned back around, they were getting stuck from traffic. If you had gone that way, that's that's a whole different experience. Right, and I mean, it, it, it wasn't even computing to go towards the smoke in my head. It was to evacuate, to get away, I go north. Do you remember around what time you were heading out of town, getting out of, out of Dodge? About 2.30 or 3 o'clock so in early. the afternoon. And I've talked to some people who were in my neighborhood and they were staying at their house till nightfall. So when also when we were all also thinking that we were gonna leave before they were gonna tell us to leave, but a lot of people weren't told to leave. I mean, you were not told to leave, were you? No, no, we just, cause again, we were both from California and I've been around fires. And growing up, I've had some few bad fires in my neighborhood. Never lost a house, but neighbors did. So I kind of know that reality of the situation. I've been a Lahaina resident for 35 years right there on Front Street. And it's home. My truck even tells me it's home. Yeah, I'm driving from the other side this morning and my truck goes five minutes from home. And I'm like, oh, not really. Now, we're stunned all out there. I've got some really sentimental jewelry that I'm really hoping that'll be there. Um, but yeah, we still can't go anywhere near it. What's the feeling like right now? Is it, is, cause it doesn't feel like anyone here can get closure of any sense. No, it's, it's sheer frustration. Um, they wouldn't even let the Humane Society in to feed cats, try to trap animals, um, which is absolutely horrific knowing that we have so many cats out there, it's been horrific. And then to have the road not being open, we couldn't get to the other side to get supplies, um, absolutely ridiculous. There's a lot of stuff you can't replace, you know, your whole life is in a, your belongings, your collections, you know, starting from when you were a kid to when you're an adult and, you know, it's all gone. You can't start over because that surfboard shaper is gone. He's not gonna make you another board. You know, those coins that my father, who passed away 
almost nine years ago, gave me. He bought me and my brothers, um, you know, those walking liberty coins every year, you know, of our lives and to give us later in life. And uh, yeah, everything's gone. But, uh, Have you been not. able to go back? Not yet. No, we're in, I think, zone 14A that just came out and we don't know what their process is of clearing it. The EPA has to go through and make sure all the, the batteries and unexploded propane tanks and things like that are out of the way before they're gonna let us in. But I'm prepared, I've got my boots, I got my hazmat gear, I got a helmet, I got goggles, I got respirators, I have everything. I'm ready to go as soon as I say go, I'm going. I need closure and that's the only way I'm gonna get it is to be able to go through the property, maybe find one thing that didn't melt that ties me to, you know, my previous life and uh, go from there. But it seems like you guys haven't been able to really start to at least that next step. It seems like you're stuck in a month ago. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing too is there's not a lot of closure. We're not able to go back and even dig through the rubble and see if you can find, you know, a piece of jewelry like my, Dad had died when I was six, so all my dad's jackets, his poetry, his things that he had left, you know, his rings, like my grandfather's stuff, you know, my stuff, like all of that. You just kind of want to see if there's anything, like uh, just a piece of it just to have. You really do realize, I think, like, the, just the little things mean so much. They're not replaceable. Like everyone's like, oh, you can get a new house and new stuff. I'm like, that's not the stuff I miss. Like I just miss, I can't get that back. What's the biggest thing you miss? If you could go back to 31 days ago, what would you wish you could do one more time? Well, at this point, go to work. <laughs> Have a normal day on the beach with it being crowded and tourism going. I mean, being on the boat today, it's, it's nice. It's the second time I've been out on the boat in the last month, and it feels at home being on the water. Poi Kalima! Poi Kalima! Poi Kalima!